this is a sketch of the map of Mount Ecclesia, which is the international headquarters of the Rosicrucian Fellowship. And as you can see, the main drive, which is symbolized by this diagram here, looks like a snake. It's called Ecclesia Drive, and it leads from the archway uh, on Amic Street, close to Mission Avenue, all the way to the temple. We are here in front of the archway entrance to the main drive of uh, Mount Ecclesia, the International Headquarters of the Fellowship. And as you can see, the arch unites two sides where there is a lion on each side, represented the masculine and feminine side, and symbolically representing the head and the heart. So the concept here is a union of head and heart to bring about the birth of higher consciousness uh, through intuition and inner perception. As we are entering Ecclesia Drive, which is that serpentine path that leads from here, the, the uh, archway, all the way to the end, which is a temple, we are reminded that this is a reflection of our inner temple and a manifestation of our spine. So the spine has 33 vertebrae, this path has 33 steps, as Christ at 33 years a, of, of uh, life. We walk the path and we expand our consciousness and as we're going to walk the path, we're going to find the spiritual centers that are along the path that uh, represent the Douglas glands or the, the spiritual chakras uh, that uh, open up uh, our consciousness to spiritual faculties. Behind me, you can see the star pine, which is an evergreen, meaning a, a, a tree that is constantly uh, manifesting life. And we have the base chakra or the gonads in the, in the Douglas glands that represent the first step in the, in the awakening of spiritual faculties. This tree was planted in 1912 by Max Handel himself as a symbol of this uh, renewal of life, this everlasting evergreen life. And as you can tell today, 105 feet later, the tree still represents that same symbol of eternal life. We are here at the Founder's Cross, which is a circle which has a star in the center and then the Founder's Cross, which represents the four elements. And on each of the upper branches of the cross, you have the letter CRC, standing for Christian Rose Cross, the founders of the Rosicrucian Order. This is the second step on this path. We are reaching here the second spiritual center related to the adrenal glands. This cross was planted in October 28, 1911 by Mike Sandel, Mrs. Handel, and seven other probationers who wanted to make a formal commitment to this great work of the Elder Brothers. And Mike Sandel explained that besides the nine members that were present physically, there were four other members who were present invisibly, three of the brothers plus Christian Rosencross himself from the inner planes attending to this ceremony that was a major step for founding this place. At the third stage in our climbing this spiritual path in front of the electric emblem. We are connecting here with the third of the Douglas glands, which is the spleen. Emblem was given in 1914 to the fellowship by one of its members as a reminder that this emblem should be lit at night as a symbol of bringing the light to the world. We are now in front of the Pro Ecclesia Chapel, which is one of the most important elements here on the path. It's the fourth step, which is the middle step, where we have a connection here to the thymus gland in the system, in our Douglas system. And on the path, we are now going from the lower to the higher part of the consciousness as we step on this uh, spinal serpentine path. God is light. If we walk in the light, as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. The chapel was built to reflect the Spanish mission style of the time and has been a very important factor here 
where the devotional activities of the fellowship are being carried for now almost 100 years. Around this chapel, as you cannot see, but there is a very powerful etheric structure that has been constructed by the prayers and the meditations and the spiritual activities that went on through this chapel, like every week. Every day, actually, we have a service in the morning, in the afternoon. Every Sunday, we have a Sunday service. And all of this spiritual energy that is being carried on is actually building a very powerful historic structure around the, the physical building. We are here in front of the healing center, which is the fifth step upon the path, relates to the uh, Douglas gland called the thyroid gland. And here we have some very interesting symbols in the front of the building. On either side of the stairway, we have two caduceus of Hermes. Of course, the caduceus of Hermes, as you know, is a symbol of initiation and a symbol of healing. On the door, you find a heart with a torch or a light on it showing that in order for healing to take place, one has to open one's heart and one's soul. And above the doorway, you find a lamp, symbol of the mind, which is the guiding force that helps us find the truth and the light. And the light of the lamp is surrounded by a radiant sun, which is a symbol of the spirit, which inspires us with all his wisdom. So we are here at the Ecclesia, the healing temple, the last step into this path of uh, spiritual development. The temple is symbolically representing the head on top of the spine. If the path was the spine with its 33 steps, the temple represents the skull, which has 22 bones, 22 meaning the, the master numbers that represent the master builder, which we are all on the path, master builders, master alchemists, trying to change matter into spirit. The, the building here was designed by Lester Kremer, who was an architect and a mason. He had into the building various symbols which uh, define the wisdom. Now inside the temple we have also a series of vignette paintings that represent each of the 12 signs of the zodiac. The entrance is oriented toward the east and you can tell that either side of the door there are two pillars. These pillars stand for the masculine and the feminine, Yakim and Boaz, the two pillars that really maintain the, the balance of inside the, the etheric temple and the living temple of man. On top, you have a triangular lentil, which has in the midst of it, a whole seeing eye of God. The triangular shaped top is really reflective of the three aspects of uh, divinity. Uh, the Trinity of you know the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, or the three aspects of uh, uh, the Creator, the Sustainer, and the Destroyer. And above that, you see two spheres. One stands for the Sun, the other one stands for the Moon, which are the two luminaries, which are the two polar, two, two polar elements that lighten the day and the night. In the middle, you have the two doors that uh, are opening the entrance inside the temple. These doors are decorated mainly with two signs, the signs of Leo and the signs of Aquarius. Well, the Rosicrucian Fellowship is dedicated to preparing mankind for the age of Aquarius, which is coming in another 500 years. And those pioneers who are feeling the energy of Aquarius already are starting to want to leave according to the principle of that new age. Uh, the temple is oriented with the 12 signs of the zodiac inside, and what we have, Aquarius is on the east, be just behind the doors and Leo is on the west where the altar is and the reason for this is because Leo and Aquarius mark that axis of the new age that we are going to. Definitely this place is very strongly overshadowed by the order of the Rose Cross. You can sense the energy when you come to temple and during the services in particular. You can feel the presence of the elder brothers, the invisible helpers and the spiritual hierarchies who are working in the ethers from above. 